I still remember how I felt when I stepped on the stage. My chest was tight, my heart was pounding, and stomach twisting. I thought I was on fire. So the speech notes I was holding in my hand was like cramming because I don't know what to do. Then when I went up the stage, looked down at the audience, every single person was looking at me. I was like, please guys, do not look at me. Too bad the time people were not using their phones. That time they wish the people look at the phones and not looking at me. So I want to get up, I look at, so it's my time to talk. I was taking my notes out take, and then try to read over the entire notes. The entire 10 minutes speech, I didn't look at anybody at all because it was so scared. And after I finished all my speech, came back down, at that time I told myself, say, public speaking sucks. I could never want to do that again. That's a sense for me to end up with you here. If I'm pretty sure some people might have a similar experience like me as well. So in today's presentation, I just want to encourage you that if you're shy or just simply don't like to have uh, any public speaking, I want you to walk out from here and start practicing your skill because without your communication skill and your public speaking, you're, undergo, you're going to suffer in every single way I can tell you, even your life and your career as well. That's the reason why I'm here today. I don't, that's because I'm a little bit time on time. So I'm gonna move on to the next one here. So this goal, I have three goals here. I can see on the screen here. The first one is I like to, when people here can improve their public speaking and just communication skill so that they can explore the local culture. I know that some people here, they are immigrants like me as well. I'm an immigrant as well. English is not my first language. I speak Cantonese, I speak Mandarin as well. So if you improve your public speaking skill on your communication skill, when you talk to other people who in the your neighbors or your community, you can have a really clear and strong message to the people, they can hear you. That's the first number, first uh, goal. And second one is, I also know that a lot of people here, they're looking for a job. As you know that, when you're looking for a job, you are going to the interview. And when you go to the interview, what are you going to do? Before that, you probably prepare all the script and try to pronounce all the words correctly. At the same time, you still have to so scared that you're going to see someone that you don't know and the person is going to judge you. So public skills can help you for that as well. And further is if you already have a job, but you want to advance your career, with a good communication skill, it's going to, going to make you really advanced and you're going to stand out from the cloud as well. And with that, I'd like to take a look at the agenda today. So the first one I'm going to talk about this, I will briefly introduce myself again. And then next, we're going to talk about why public speaking is so important. And moving on, we're going to look at some of the interesting facts about public speaking. The next one, and that is the main thing of the reason why you're here, which is how to ace your presentations. Then next one, we'll be able to talk about how to have a crystal clear voice on the day of your presentation, because this is really important fact. When you, have, you don't have a really good voice, you can't even talk, right? So now let's talk about who is Carrie. This is my living, my education. I undergrad, I study the uh, computer science or IT related uh, um, work. So most of my focus on programming, database work. And later on, I also study MBA and I got that from the UK. And my focus is on the uh, finance. And later on, when I, because I move on the career, I also study project management, which is uh, the certified PMP, which I had to write the exam. I'm pretty sure a lot of people wouldn't know what the PMP is. Then next one, I also have the case from the strategy management and leadership. This is like really important when you're doing the uh, database or the data related to work because you have to provide the recommendations to your customer and then, and those are going to be played for you as well. And in terms of the expertise, I kind of mentioned earlier as well. So my expertise is focused on project management. So I'm a certified project manager. I also do like programming database related work. And then also working on some of the data analytics and search planning. Some of the projects I did, it's uh, some customer insights employee engagement and HR management. If you don't know what it is, I maybe explain a little bit later for this, or you can ask me after the, uh, the meeting. And right now I'm working in the engineer firm, 
this one, we are focused on the uh, nuclear radiometric support, uh, technology and radar technology. So this is more on the engineering related work, but we're also working on a lot of the data related, like based on the data we have, we use the data to make decisions, how we target the customer, how we do the consulting as well. So that's a little bit me for the education and area of the teeth. Then we still have another slide here. This one is my public speaking enrollment. So we can see that I have the uh, DTM, which is the Distinguished Toastmaster. For the people who have this one, you need to speak a lot, make a lot of speeches in front of other people, and then do a lot of leadership. And sometimes you need to, I think based on last my search, this one is only like approximately 2% of the people to complete this uh, program. I also do the corporate mentor and uh, mentor and coaching at this, uh, this moment as well. So I'm helping some of the company to train the employee for the public speaking. And also do the one-on-one -on -one mentor and coaching. One of the person have been, one of the people have been mentor right now, she, um, I'm so lucky actually, she, uh, she has to get a job right now because uh, she has been looking for a job for a long time as she, after she graduated. She got a PhD, but because uh, she has a little bit communication issue. So we cut, I was helping her so that um, try to fix her, some of the way how to communicate and her pronunciation. So right now she got the job and I'm happy for her. So that's a little bit about me right now. I feel, I was just talking to myself. If anyone wants to, you guys listen to me? Maybe you can, someone can type in one, know that you guys are listening. I can't really see you guys, one have the screen on. Okay. All right, perfect, thanks. Slow me down if you think I speak, speak too fast. I know I have a tendency to speak really fast. I try to try to slow, slow down so you can hear as well. Okay, next. That is very important. Why? Why public speaking is so important? Now, I'd like to invite you to imagine with me if I decided to never go back to the stage since my last speech at the grade four. Where do you see me now? You probably will never see me standing, sitting right here and talking to you at this moment because I was so scared and I told myself I never want to go back, right? But I, because I know that communication is so important, I decided to go back. So I'd like to let you see a screen, see who it is. Does anyone know who is the Forrest Gump? I know this is a really old movie. Anyone know this one? Give me a one or two to just say, yeah, right? This is a really good movie. I know that it's really old, but then the things that you can learn from this one, you never forget about it. So one of the, the word, uh, one of the sentences he said in, in the uh, movie is, he said, my mama said, lie was like a box of chocolates. You never know what's going to get. That's so true, isn't it? We don't know what our life looks like because of this full surprise. However, if we also plan ahead, we always prepare our life for what's going to be next. Then you know what's going to come next and what will come to you, you always prepare. It's similar like the risk management we're talking about. For me, I was a bit, honestly, when I was a little bit younger, special education in China or here at the beginning, they don't really focus and say, oh yeah, public speaking is so important. So I kind of wing up most of the time when I was in university here, people kind of, oh, I just try to ace all my uh, courses, try to get an A, A plus. I think that's most of the Chinese people would do as well, just try to get an A and pass, and try to get your CFA and get your all those certifications, right? Then one night, after I finished work, I, I, after I stopped working, I was working in the insulting com uh, industry because of consulting, you have, you have to talk to so many people. I realized that my, communications really is not even uh, reach the bar because everyone's talking and then my communication sucks and then my, I can't really talk clear to them and I have accent, anything. So at the time I realized that it's time for me to do something. Then I start looking at, starting looking at like, okay, how am I gonna improve? That's the time that I started looking at like communication courses and about Toastmaster, all those things. So I want you to take note as well Two things people have to think about is, if you are the business um, professional or you're entrepreneur, that's really you have two options. You either become really good public speaker or you just uh, 
compete with disadvantage because you are so scared to stand in front of people. You never want to get in the front of people and you know, you're not going to become like a manager or something just because you, you don't want to talk in front of other people and you don't want to stand in the people. So for you, in order to get to where you want to be, I really want you to remember that having a confident and clear communication is the key to reach your destination. Regardless of what the, uh, your destination will be, you have to have that. And for me, I know my minutes is speaking too fast. For me, I try to slow down and that's something I work on. And for you, we have to assess where you are and then you try to improve. Now we're gonna move on to some of the facts of uh, public speaking. So I'll pick two facts here. So the first one is, everyone is afraid of public speaking. And the second one is, everyone is an excellent public speaker. You're thinking, what? It doesn't make sense. You're saying that the two factors kind of uh, contradict with the other, right? So the thing that you're supposed to think is that everyone is afraid of public speaking. Are you sure? Because if you look at all the celebrities, those people, big names, who want to speak, there's no problem. You think that those people are like, they just born in this way or they just age for anything. I can tell you the truth that those people, they are good at public speaking. It's not just because they're born in this way. It's just because they practice, they learn the skill, and then use, apply the skill to, to public speaking and hide them. Another thing I want to share, it's kind of interesting, is that based on the study, they're saying a lot of people list public speaking as number one fear and just have a death. Meaning, people rather die instead of talking in front of people. Is that scary? I don't think you want to die, right? I want you, I want you to actually speak in front of the people. I don't want to die. That's the first one. And the second one is everyone's the excellent speaker. As I mentioned earlier, it's because public speaking is something that we can learn. It's not something that you, oh, you have to be be inserting the leadership skill in order to get into. No, everyone can be. So it's just like the personal trainer. If you to train the people to lose weight, those speakers are doing the same thing as well. They can help you to see what's, how, uh, what's your weakness and how you can improve. And they prepare the plan for you so that you can reach where you are. So if this look at the two factors here, you say that, see, something that we can do, right? So I want to give it advice for this one is, just practice, practice, and practice. People say practice makes perfect. I really want you to study thinking at this moment. You need to practice and then improve your communication skills starting from this moment, this second. Okay. Now, more along, since today we talk about the uh, data business and data analysis, so I have the chart for you here. Look at this chart here. It looks really busy. So the question is right at the front saying, who does a data analyst interact with? That's what I know. Do you want to say, uh, just timing something, maybe the programmer team, project management team, you want timing something, so I know that if you have a knowledge about what it is. Anyone want to shout? Yeah? Okay. Like, looks like everyone's a piece to look at the screen. So again, depends on the industry you are in. A data analyst usually, based on what I'm seeing from the consulting industry, a data analyst, they actually interact with every single person here. The rare case we said external client, but it really depends on, <coughs> excuse me, depends on which industry you're in. So most of the case you would deal with the data reporting team, your own team, and you also deal with the programming team, programming team, and client consulting, what vendors, depends on what it is. I'm not gonna go deep into this one, just so you know that you are going to talk to a lot of people. You're not the person just like standing on the screen and play with the data. That's your job. And then after five, five o'clock, go home. No, that's not you. You have to think that your job is going to communicate with the people around here and you're going to talk to them. And that's how you advance your career as well. So I hope this slide can help you with light. Now we're going more into something that next we'd like to see. It's important part of this presentation is how to ace your next presentation. So in this one here, there's many ways to improve your communication. So in here, I'm going to talk about three things here, which is information gathering, 
uh, oh, information gathering along your talk and handle your Q&A. This is the steps that you are going to prepare your report and pre prepare your report and re uh, present it in front of your whoever. I'm gonna give you assignment here. The assignment here I'm gonna do is, you are gonna find out your manager asks you to present the result to the management team and for them, the management, based on your presentation, they are going to find out how they're going to have the strategy to improve their, whatever the decision. So that's your job. So first one, you know that you are the data analyst here. You have the object is to find out the engagement score and then provide the finding. And your audience is internal management. So I say again, internal management, not external management. That means they are your colleagues, not to scale. And the purpose is to help them to make a decision. So moving along, information gathering here. If you look at a few questions on the screen here, you say, who are the audience exactly? That's how uh, going to work solution to a problem. That's a few questions I'll let you read. I'm pretty sure you can read the questions here. The one thing I want to point out strongly in this one is, who are the audience exactly? Then you probably say, yeah, internal management, right? That's the answer. I will think deeper. Before you convince someone, you need to get their attentions. Otherwise, we talk, we just waste because they don't know what you're talking about. So that's why your knowledge of audience motivations factor in. If you don't know why they're here, I don't know why they come to the meeting, then again, so your talk is not gonna be engaging as well. That said, in order to get your audience tensions, you need to know your audience, the importance. So I want you to think, hmm, they are internal management. How you think about what title they are in? Like which exactly department they are coming in and why, how they use the information to, to make a decision. Then look at the demographic questions like, hmm, how old are they? Are they like young group? Like maybe you have an age breakdown from like 24 to 35, whatever the, the age breakdown you have. So because you need to gather those information for you to make a decision. And the thing is, you want to see if the people you're talking with, are they just a business manager or is technical manager? Because if you, they are the technical manager, you probably, when you talk about the inform, all the information you gather in, you try to get close to the heart because you don't want the people just thinking, oh, you're assuming that I know nothing about this data. I know what you're talking about. So some people have that kind of thinking, but if you have a, that kind of talking or information and the way how you talk in the presentation, they know that, okay, this person really tailored the presentation for me or this audience, not to stay like, rather the template and just talk about it. But if you all just know that the people just have a business uh, knowledge, they don't really have any uh, maybe information technology or anything that like BS information, then you don't want to bring in any in a, a term that they don't know. So recently I was talking to a management. I just gave him a proposal about how to do the SEO. When I was talking to him, he's like, he's like what is SEO? And then I realized, like, yeah, I don't think he knows anything about SEO. Don't miss my time to talk about this thing. So instead of just going to the term, how to explain how those things, I just say, hey, this is how you drive your traffic to the, uh, to the, to the, to your traffic, uh, bring into your, your website, how to help you to engage all the, uh, other uh, audience, things like that. Try to talk in more like a layman's term instead of a more technical term because the people get offended if you don't try to explain to them. Then also you have to think about, some region as well. If you're gonna present the topic to the people just in, like most of the case, when you talk to the people, if you're working in the, the bank, for instance, right? In your case, you're working your internal management in the bank. If they are different locations, you probably try to talk in a different way because some people in Vancouver, they might talk different and people in Easter and Quebec, all this thing. So try to collect information as you could. And then you also try to figure out like how much to know a topic and you think about how do, you, how do you know if I say certain things with you, do you understand or not? So a presentation is not about just grab the old information and dump it onto a template. Then you're done, congratulations. No, you're not done yet. So your presentation is about try to understand who need information and try to tailor them. At the same time, your presentation at the same have to be engaging as well. So think about those audience. Um, recently, I actually have an example how I, I present a, a presentation to a room of uh, 
people they are professional and entrepreneur. So the talk was to try to motivate them to surround themselves with the right people because now they will talk about networking and how do you get motivated, how to go move forward. So based on the information I collect, I know those people, they are working in like banking industry, hospital and small business owner, all those things. And also know the age range they are approximately about like 30 to 45 years old. For those people, they have like established a good career at some degree, but they want to advance and they want to enhance what they are going to do so move them to the next level, right? So as a result, I decided to present a space to them to just motivate them to look around in the networking and learn from those what they can inspire them because I think this is important for that age as well. I also want to say, just remember that all the material you present is important because one, you present your material. If you don't know what your material is, then it's really hard when you talk because you feel like you're just reading, right? So in your presentation, you just make sure the tips is like, focus your points, know what you're doing, and clear, clear what they're going to say. And your message has to be really, really clear because you don't want to say one thing and they don't say something else. All they're thinking, hmm, what are you trying to tell me here? So you have to be really good at so creative, especially the people here in the Western here, they don't really have the mindset that I know this I'm from China. So I speak some of the, sometimes what I think is like, huh, how can I say something so that they don't really get exactly what I say, but try to get them the hook. But here the people is a little bit more straightforward. Like especially you talk about information, they don't want surprise. Just tell me what you will tell me. That's all I need. I don't want to like spend half an hour trying to figure out what you try to tell me. So that kind of mindset you have to think about. That's why we try to know who is your audience. All this super important, right? And next, now you have all the information. You have to write a speech. Look at the chart here. You have the opening. You have the body conclusion. That reminds you of your essay, right? Like when you write your essay, you will always have to have opening, body, and conclusion. So for the report I just assigned to you, you have the purpose of the report. And then you also have like, just right at the beginning opening, you want to tell them, okay, that's what my purpose of the report. And then this is my conclusion based on my fighting. And then you have some recommendation right at the front. Because again, especially look at those uh, summary, summary pages, I've read the first page, you get all the information because that's all the exact members they will look at because they don't want to spend so much time to like look at like 100 slides to figure out, oh, your conclusion is just at the, at the end of the slide, right? So they want to see a friend, right the friend, they want to know what you try to tell me. Then in the body here, you want to tell them how your data corrected. So in this case, I'll show you some example here, say like your your information together is from the online survey because your data is collected from your customers. Those customers want to, for instance, in this case, it's like the customer, they went to a bank and then they, we get some invitation from the bank and say, hey, how do you feel about your uh, visit this time? So this is like your method, this online survey. And then the finding is in cool, like how, when is the, the data collected? Because it's important, sometimes the, the, uh, the period of the collective can make a difference. Sometimes like from the summertime, also from the, uh, the winter time, they'll make a difference. I'm not gonna go deep into it, just give some example. In your body, you're gonna provide those information because they want to see how you, the executive member, they want to know how you're gonna collect data and why you have the kind of data coming from. That's the time for you to present to them how you provide all the evidence. And then at the end here is the conclusion because no, you're telling me that's the problem and you're telling me all those things that uh, you're doing. So what's your recommendations? What do you want me to do? So in here, it's time for you to provide some recommendation based on your observations. You don't want to re recommend something that you don't have a fact to support you, right? So recently I've done one of these. So one of the project is a philosophical bank, similar to this one as well. And the, re the score we received from this one is we found certain regions have really low score, some regions have really high score. So a lot of them, exactly remember, they want to know how the score coming in, that, because that affect that pay, the bonus. I don't know, I was trying to tell you, but this one is so important to them. So they're really concerned about their score. So one of the examples we have found this one is we figured out that the people in the regions, so I'm gonna just give an example, this is not a real case, okay, I don't wanna say it. So it's in a Quebec, we get really low score. 
Then we'll look at the all the way verbatim they coming in from the um, coming in from the uh, the survey. They're saying that the reason why a lot of customers give with the low score for the low score for this one is because um, a lot of people they went to the uh, the branch and figured out that the ATM machines were not working. So same thing, right? If you're a customer, you want to go to the uh, servers and something's not working, they're not going to give you oh, 10 over 10. So that's why the score is really low. Based on that information we collect, we recommend that the, the exact member, they can, what they can do is go deeper to figure out why does the ATM machine is not working, and then if there's anything, they can fix it. So that is the all life of speech. So you probably think that, yay, congratulations, I finished my speech, now I can go home. So you probably think about, no, not yet, because a lot of cases when you finish talking, you are going to answer the questions. So that's what we're going to bring to the next level. That's really, it's uh, also, I want to mention something that I think kind of bonus to put this on. It's uh, nowadays, as I mentioned, a lot of people have the phone with the hand all the time. If you're not trying to engage with them, they are going to just look at the phone. Oh, someone just sent me a message. Let me look at it. And then they just zoom away. They kind of don't know what you're talking about, right? So I want to add this in it to, to how they engage the um, audience. So there's three things here we look at is visualizations and the power of questions and pausing and understand the power of the positive thinking. So visualization, this one, visualization the technique, this is important because if you can visualize something, give them the thinking and the audience is gonna think about it. Oh, okay, that's what you try to say. Not just say, just say it. You have to give them like a visual, visual idea that's what it looks like. For instance, oh, this say, this oil and gas tank is about like six feet wide. Then it's sometimes you have to think of, huh, what is six, six feet long? How big it? And then you give an example to support. Six feet is about like that size of table, something like that. You give it some sort of visualization, then they are going to like listen to you. Another one for the power question is, during the, during the presentation, you try to ask them a questions because uh, all the people, as I say, if they look at the, look at the uh, phone, they probably won't, they probably won't even like, listen to you, right? So if you say, hey, David, can you help me to ask this question? And they was, whoops, yes, yeah, are you asking me? So if they keep doing that, the people are going to like, oh, shoot, this person will ask me a question, I have to listen. So give them something like that. At the same time, also pausing. Pause is really powerful because uh, when you talk, if you keep talking, blah, 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 you, you will, some people think, oh, when you're going to stop, can't just stop. But if you ask them a question at the same time, let them think. I think this is really useful, especially you, uh, if you listen to those uh, comedians, those uh, show, a lot of time, they would give it a joke and then give it a little bit of time for them to think. And then, oh, okay, that's what I'm trying to say. But if we give them the answer right away, huh? What are you trying to say, right? So pausing is very really powerful too. That's I want you to think and try to add that into your presentation as well. Then also the positive thinking. A lot of people talk, about, nowadays people talk about positive thinking. So what is it? Positive thinking is something that you see in like, when you talk to someone, if you're so down, if you always use like negative words in your presentation, they're thinking, hmm, this person I think is a really negative person. But if you use a lot of positive thinking, you are so happy, you're so energetic, you try to talk to them, you try to help them, and all your audience will get engaged right away, they're gonna follow what you're gonna say, right? So that is uh, something that's gonna influence the audience as well. So I believe there's a lot of different techniques, but I'm gonna just all like those three things that's gonna help you to think at this moment if you need to prepare your next speech. And moving on here, this is the question I talked earlier, is how to handle your Q&A? That's a different way to do it, right? So nowadays, there's a lot of questions that people are gonna ask based on what you're saying. And from the Q&A section, you can also tell that if the audience engage from what you're saying, if they are interested, in your solution or interest in something that you tell them. If you're not interested most of the time, oh, okay, just quiet and done, right? But if they're interested to know, they want, really want to know more, know more, that once you come to the Q&A section, it's gonna be a lot of questions. And you also, you want to make sure that the, you handle this Q&A section really well, because you probably spend like 20 minutes or 30 minutes to talk about everything up front. But at the last 20 minutes, People is not going to remember what had done in the beginning because it's so long. People just have really short memory to this stuff thing. So I will get a few questions on how you handle your Q&A questions here. So the first one is anti-proposal questions, which just means like, 
before, if you know where you talk, just write a list of questions that think of the piece I'm going to ask you. To say, just in case this person is going to ask me this like, question, how am I going to answer? So this is really like straightforward. I'm pretty sure you know what it is. The next one I want to more focus on them. Make sure everyone can hear the question. This is really important because nowadays, some not the online meeting, but sometimes also some meeting is not online. It's not recently have meeting. We have like a room full of people sitting there have a meeting, but some people coming from a different region, they call in as well. So at the end of the at the end of this uh, meeting, some people from this group are sitting in the room and start to ask questions. But the people in the on the online they couldn't hear because if someone's sitting at the back of this the room had no idea what you're talking about. So as the host, you need to make sure that people can hear you because if people just say blah, blah, blah at the back and then the, all the audience just listen, what's the questions about? I have no idea what the question is, right? So you need to make sure that repeat the question. You can just say, if you know the person who asked the question, just say, oh, Amber here asked if you know this audience name, right? Just say your name. But if you don't know, just try to be safe because you don't want to call someone's name wrong. You just say, the question is, just repeat what the question is. Just make sure that that's everyone's on the same page. So that's what it is. And next one is remain calm. Wow, that's just really important because once you come to the Q&A question, a lot of people, we have a lot of questions, but not every single person will agree what you said. So in this time, you have to really remain calm because if people have different opinion, doesn't mean that the person doesn't like you. It doesn't mean that people just try to against you, right? You just try to think through. People are coming from a different background or come from different um, education, everything, whatever, whatever the reason they come up, they might have a different agreement or different thinking for what you say. So your job is just standing there and listen to what they say and then answer your question calmly and don't offense anyone. That's what you need to do. Do not offense anyone. Don't get angry because people ask you something wrong. And next one is, Handle similar like, uh, the people's situation the same thing. Like if some people try to say something really negative to you, uh, just don't get engaged in the uh, in the conversation and just try to talk to the people who are supporting and say, hey, this person say something like that. But based on my my data collection, that's all my factors. So I like to use this thing. So you try not to get too engaged with the the person because then you're gonna get an argument. Oh, I don't think you're right. I don't think you're wrong. You know things like that. It's pointless. Just focus what it is and you handle the questions and the audience know what you're doing, right? And next question is, answer all the question in a positive manner. That's a similar what I mentioned earlier. Try to be positive and don't go crazy to say, hey, based on the question you have, that's what I have. So just remain, just remember all the key of question is it's all about your attitude and how you handle them. Remain calm and be positive. And then at the beginning, right now you're thinking, huh, I know, finish all my quote, I finished my speech, I will handle all my q and I'm done, right? So I want to think about it. This is the moment for you to shy. Well, the reason why I say that, because this is the time for you leave impression for the executive member. Later on, they'll come back. Hey, for instance, you want name, if your name's Anthony, for instance, wow, Anthony, this good job in presentation. I now dream like an expert. So next time, if I have a question, I'm going to ask him because he seems to know everything. So don't think the Q&A question section is useless or something that you so scared, you just really wish that nobody could ask you a question. No, try to maximize the time, try to use your uh, answer to let people think that you are the expert. Because in the end, when you go do a presentation, it's for you to make visibility and let people know that you have something that you can do. Later on, they're gonna come back to you. So really, really, this is a very important part. A lot of people don't know, do you think the Q&A, ah, whatever, it sucks. So at this point, you know that's congratulations, you've done everything. So if you're done right now, you also think about time as well. A lot of the time when we have, the reason why I asked uh, Maria earlier, say how much time I have, so that's the reason. I just want to make sure that I'm in a time thing as well. Same thing, if you have a slot of one hour for your meeting and your, your time, if people keep asking questions just because they're so interested in your talk and this is try to get more from you, you have to look at your time as well, right? You say, oh, I, my time is so five minutes away from uh, the uh, allocate time. So you can tell the audience, say, if you have any questions, put it in a chat box. I can answer a question within 24 hours or 48 hours, whatever time you allow. 
but like just because uh, right now we're really short the time, I don't want to take up everyone's everyone's time. So just tell them politely because I'm not going to offend it if you say, tell them politely because it's a reasonable reasonable right because of the time to go over. So just tell them clearly. Then now you're done, right? And moving forward, I think I have something for you as well. Just for bonus, I know I'm struggling a lot of time right now. How to have a crystal clear voice on the day of presentation? Whoa, this is a big. Imagine you spend so much time to do all your data collection, do all your report, and you're ready for the talk. And the day before, you lost your voice. Just like me, I can't talk. What are you going to do? So I'm going to give you a little tip so you can be able to write it down for that. Based on Bill Brown, he's a voice expert. He gives us a few tips here. So they said, you want your vocal cord to be wet and warm. So something you need to wear is lemon, alcohol, and caffeine, chocolate, and those salty water, food. I began thinking, what? Lemon? I thought everyone used lemon. So the reason why he said uh, not use lemon, you only use lemon if you really, really can't really talk. But normally, your voice should be fine without the lemon, because the lemon will give you some, some secret label or something like that that you won't allow you to speak nicely. And next one is, when you speak, avoid uh, increase the legs. <laughs> Biggest level. So some of the food is that try to avoid eating it. For instance, nut and smoking product and data product and those are food that's on the list as well. So if you can get the list done, so next time before you talk, make sure make sure you preserve your, your nice voice so you can talk. And next one, protect your local voice. Don't force your voice. Sometimes some people getting so excited and then just force the voice and say, and the worst thing is to try to whisper, try to whisper and with the mood really Forced voice because that's really hurt your voice. So try not do that because it's not going to be good. All right, getting time here. So just to recap, well, that's what we talked today. So we talk about why public speaking is so important because having a confidence and clear communications to reach your destinations. So we said this one. So don't think this communication is useless. You you rather spend all your time to get CFA, get all the destination rather than improving your public skill. I can tell you that's so wrong. They should be equally important. If those destinations, those uh, tools, it's really helping you to do the hard, hard work. In the end, it's how you communicate with your colleague, how to communicate with your manager, all this HR. And second part is so we talk about the in, uh, interesting fact about the public speaking. So now you know the two things is going hand in hand. Even though people are afraid of public speaking, that's something you can learn. And everyone that's an excellent speaker. So don't, don't look at them yourself that hey, I don't think I can become a public speaker. No, you can. You just think, think positively, you will be fine. And then the next one is how to ace next, uh, how to ace your next presentation. So yeah, I don't want to repeat what I said. If I said that, basically you just go through the three steps. You have information gathering and all your talk, and finally how you handle your talk. Um, the end is how some of the tips how you uh, have a really good noise, good voice on the day of presentations. And I'm done. I just meet the clock, three o'clock. Any questions? Maria, I'm done. Anyone here? Any questions? If you got any questions? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. And uh, wow. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So everyone. Uh, is there any questions? Now it's the Q and &E and uh, Q and &E session. So anybody, if you have any questions, you can using the chatting. Uh, also, you can think everybody can talk, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and also you can direct just talk and ask questions. It's free to ask. So, uh, so, 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 anybody who has had questions, yeah, about the presentation. Wow, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I can, uh, I, I can see, I can tell people see. Pe People, people see great presentations. Thank you so much, Karen. Okay, I have good news for everyone. Uh,大家好啊,这个我看到大伙对Karen老师的这种呢,这个热烈的反响,在这里告诉大家一个好消息啊,这个刚才呢,这个实际上我们的班主任Karen呢,已经跟Karen老师呢,在前几天达成一致
在这个群里边呢，可以找到培养老师，他用微信不多，但是他可以在里边进行一些答疑啊。大家可以拿起手机来，这是一个群，直接扫码入群啊。如果 anybody who want to talk with Karen or and also Q and A， 呃 ，just、uh, go ahead， yes， 是这样，因为呢，可能大家呢，这个还是比较害羞啊。这个大家可能敲打字还可以，如果说跟老师直接呢，这种在在这个 Zoom 里边对话，我觉得有些学员可能好像不大好意思说话，对吧？校长太了解大家了啊，所以呢，现在是这样，我们给 k a r e 老师呢进群和大家互动的机会，好不好？所以大家那个现在可以扫码啊，大家拿起手机来。我可以问个问题吗？呃，可以 ，Yes， 是是，你可以问一下问题，对这个。呃、uh, ，Yeah, hi, Carrie. I I have a question to ask you how to. 呃，大家继续扫码啊。我们问一个问题。You talk about the communication problem. Uh, for Chinese, we have the accent. Can you share how to avoid the the people? Uh, focus on our accent, and we can have a confidence to communicate. <laughs> yeah. So Karen, the, yeah, you get okay. it. Okay. You got it, right? The question is that. Yeah, how do you focus on the person, not the accent? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, first of all, because English is our second language, we most likely we have accent. I have accent. Everybody, like most of people, we have accent, regardless of how long you spend、uh, your time in in the country. I would say that if you say something, try to be clear. And slow down. I'm really bad example, honestly. I serious. I think my head is spinning so fast. Every time I talk, I talk so fast. I can't stop. People tell me, "Carrie, stop. Just slow down."、Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like maybe after ten minutes, I'll be like bang, 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 bang again. I just can't really、um, focus. So my advice to you is slow down and get your message clear, really clear. If people know what you're saying, then they're gonna listen. Instead, if you have a problem, just listen and then try to. Spend so much time to try to figure out what you try to tell people. Listen,、uh, what you try to try to tell me? Are you done? Okay, like, thank you. You see what I mean? Like, just have to get a really clear message. People will go and listen. Like, they all they all understand that we have accent. As long as they can hear you, it's not something that's、uh, end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's very good. Thank、message. you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Okay, 呃，我校长的建议是这样子的啊。校长建议，首先第一点呢，可能这个口音还是个问题啊。这个你看，不是校长麦克，校长会忍不住告诉你，这个杰瑞老师他是专门做口音纠正的啊。这个他会有讲座，但是可能要到十月份才会有。如果有他的讲座，您可以来听一下。我不知道是我们哪一位学员啊，我没有听出声音来，然后可以来听一下。当然，我们口音越少越好了。校长也有口音啊。这个 everybody has the accent, yes. 然后，但是我觉得 Karen 刚才讲的非常好，就大家可以放慢速度讲。关键是我们是 deliver information， 尤其是我们做数据的人，做数据的人呢，大家 care 的是你的数据是不是 clean， 你的数据是不是真的能够说明问题，对吧？这个，这个，我我我我这个我我因为毕竟做了二十一年嘛，看到学生学生找到工作，并且并且他们每天的 daily job， 如果你的数据做得足够的好，那我们最关键是把我们的结论，把我们的 information 传递给我们的 client 或者我们的老板，我觉得这个。可能更重要一点。当然，还有一个很好的选择呀，可以跟 Kerry 老师来学一下 Small Talk 的 Presentation。Yes， 是吧？这个大家这个继续啊。我们那个 Kerry 老师，这个我看已经有二十多个学员扫码进来了。可能刚才大伙没有听懂，就是呢，如果大家有问题，现在可以问 Q a n A。这个这是现在 Q a n A Sessions 啊。看到大伙这个回复很热烈，说 Great Presentation， Appreciate。如果大家觉得不好意思啊，刚才这个我觉得我们那位女学员。勇气可嘉，校长给点个赞。对<笑>、yeah, ，at least 人家敢这个勇敢的 stand up and speak out 啊，这个。但是我知道我们大部分做数据的学员呢，是比较这个叫内向啊，内秀，这个内秀啊，就是内心是很很非常的有这个 passion， 但是可能不是会特别讲出来。那没有关系，大家哎，校长好，哎，你好，啊，很开心，啊 ，OK， yes， 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 好，这样的，呃 ，Harry。Uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, could you, uh, could you please answer question? Um, like talk about a little more about uh, Toastmaster. <laughs> Toastmaster. And how, yeah. How could the data analyst to find a good uh, uh, Toastmaster club for for the data analyst? Okay, I can answer this question. Yes. So when you look for the club. 
you will, uh, you're going to like just uh, shop around. I mean, shop around really means you don't want to just go into the club and say, hey, I'm going to pay your money and become your member. So your job is at least check out a few of them that's close to you because I think location is very really important. Depends on the, um, how often the, the meeting is. Usually some of them like weekly and some of them it's like uh, every other week. Really depends on the clubs you're in. So I would just say go in to check it out, the culture. And if you see people you like, then you're thinking, hmm, those people can be a mentor because you can have some mentor there as well, but the mentor is limited, but yeah, it really depends on the club. So if you're looking for something particularly data analyst, I would say most, people, most of the time they won't have that kind of club, but communication skills is really for everything. It doesn't really have to be the data analyst. So, but some of them, like uh, I know that some of the tools must have like a project manager, one so if you interested you can look at but so far i haven't really seen anything particular just for data analysts i would say yeah go yeah. with the gut just check out a field if you like go for it don't think about oh i look at the club that's only particular for the uh, data data job no no just complete just improve your communication skill you'll be fine that's what yeah. i'm doing <laughs> okay <laughs> thank you thank you so much yeah Karen, i'm okay. even thinking uh, actually, you know, long time ago, somebody talked with me and said, Maria, we want to open one uh, Toastmaster club in Victoria College because there are so many students and uh, all of them, they are professionals and they need to improve their presentation skills. I'm mean, even thinking because I know you are the area directors. Uh, see, uh, actually, you know, I know Mike and I know uh, Mike and also I know Liu Yang and all of them, they, uh, they, 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 they go to the Toastmaster.